Joining me now is UFC middleweight contender Ian Hines, who takes on Kelvin Gastelum next Saturday at UFC 258. Ian, where am I catching you today, man? Uh, I'm in Denver, Colorado, and it's a beautiful day, man. Just uh, soaking up some sun. Uh, I love the hot weather, and uh, Colorado in the winter is known for a lot of snow, so days like this are just amazing. Yeah, I, I, I definitely appreciate that. If I turn my camera around, you'd see like – seven or eight inches of snow outside here. So oh, I, yeah. I'm very jealous of you. Uh, yeah, so I definitely I definitely get where you're coming from. But let's talk about the fight, man. You got a big fight coming up next Saturday. Uh, can you even get excited about it until you get in there, just judging what's happened the last couple times you were booked? You know, I've been working so hard. Camp's been, you know, one of the longest camps ever. I put in the work, you know, as we say, the hay's in the barn. And, and yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the whole trick of this sport. Don't get too excited and don't don't get too down on yourself. Just try to to ride that line in the middle. And, uh, you know, I'm I'm really excited, man. This fight week's coming uh, next week and uh, all the training's coming to an end this week and did a bunch of filming with the UFC and doing some embedded stuff this weekend. So um, it's cool, man. I'm enjoying the journey and uh, I'm ready to have us hopefully – a smooth fight week this time and uh, get in there and perform and put a show on. Yeah, it was in no way trying to jinx you. I, I, I have confidence we'll see you step in that cage on next Saturday. Uh, but what was the last year like for you? I mean, we only saw you compete for 74 seconds. So was that a difficult burden to deal with at all mentally, physically, to, to only have that small amount of cage time in 2020? Yeah, you know, absolutely. I made a ton of changes. You know, I moved to Thailand and then COVID hit. I had to come back. Um, I trained out in Vegas at Extreme Couture, some amazing coaching and, and teammates out there and uh, trained here at Genesis and, and cross training with uh, Fight Team Elevation. And, uh, you know, it's been amazing. I've grown so much. And, yeah, only last year I had one, two fights because of COVID get, get cold and a fight because of an injury. So I only really had a minute and 15 seconds in the cage last year. But people kind of got to see a glimpse of the Hurricane 2.0. And this year – uh, nothing has changed. I've grinded all last year. I put in so much work, probably like six months of work since then. And uh, I truly believe this is like the Hurricane 3.0, um, almost to a Category 5. We're going to go in there uh, February 13th and showcase all the new skills and uh, really show the people that I'm a threat to be to be reckoned in the in the middleweight division. I want My goal is to be super active this year. And uh, I'm excited to show the fans what I've been working on. I'm excited oh, man, to see a it, lot, man. A lot of been happening behind the scenes, and absolutely. For sure. And uh, it's kind of funny, right, because you were matched up with Brendan Allen, who's a very good fighter, very talented guy, and, and that fight never comes to fruition. And it was almost like you kind of moved up the rankings anyway. Like, now you're fighting yeah. Kelvin Gaslam, a former title contender. So do you prefer the, the, the things – I don't want to say that you didn't compete, but are you happier with this matchup, or would you have preferred that you got your hands on Allen given that you guys were booked twice? Yeah, I would have loved to get my hands on Allen and then had this matchup. Like, I, I, I thought that was what was going to happen. And, <clears throat> you know, coming off two losses of guys that are, are high-ranked and uh, like Derek Brunson and Omari Akhmedov, uh, real close fights. Uh, coming off two losses, I had to prove myself again. Yeah, uh, did a spectacular finish against Gerald Mearshart. And then you're kind of on that cusp, right? You're the top 15. Are you going to have to fight a new up-and-coming hungry guy or are you going to get your chance to jump forward? As you saw with Kevin Holland and Marvin Vittori, they got their chance to jump forward. I knew my time would come soon. Um, you know, I, I wanted to rebook the fight again with with Brendan Allen. He said he was busy. He fought a week later and and got knocked out. And uh, Hats off to Sean Strickland on a great performance. But he got the 50G bonus. And I was just like, oh, man, that's my that's my knockout. You know, that's how I kind of felt. But uh, then the opportunity came to fight Kelvin Gaslam. And um, I knew it was my time to shine. And this is what we've been waiting for and what we've been training for. Safe to say this is your, your biggest fight to date, you think? Yeah, absolutely. Usually your next fight is always your biggest fight. But, yeah, definitely. I, I compare this kind of to the Derek Brunson fight. You know, it was a, a super seasoned vet guy, someone who's fought everyone. I learned so much that fight. I took a lesson that fight. Uh, was inches away from a knockout in the very first round. Um, and just kind of had to go back and work on some basics because inches win fights at the highest level. And that's what we've been working on, a ton of basics. I feel like I've learned a ton of lessons. I feel like I'm more vet, vetty and, and more of a seasoned vet now and more comfortable in that cage. And I'm excited to show it. And Kelvin, you know, has, has struggled recently. He's on a three-fight skid. From your 
from your stance, like, how do you how do you break that down? Do you feel like you're kind of catching him at a good time where he's not what he used to be? Do you feel like he's just running to tough luck? Kind of what, what do you think's going on with him? You know, I mean, with Kelvin, you never know the guy who's going to show up. But the guy we're training for to show up is the guy who fought Israel Adesanya. You know, he's on a three fight skid. His back's against the against the wall. And, you know, that's when people usually fight the hardest. So that's what we're expecting. But I feel stylistically it's going to be a very fun fight to watch, especially like the first three minutes. And, um, you know, I feel like I just have to mix it up between clinch, striking with him, taking him down, uh, just mixing everything up, just being super unpredictable. His timing is impeccable. And so I can't be uh, the guy who's one dimensional. I feel he's a little one dimensional and I'm going to expose that. And you talked about uh, you, you dropped a couple of names there, Kevin Hall, and you mentioned uh, and uh, Marvin Vittori was the other one. When you see, obviously, you wanted to compete last year and probably watching from the sidelines was kind of, you know, not the, not the best thing in the world. But when you see that movement in the division and there's a lot of, uh, you know, it's very fluid. Does that excite you? Does that make you feel like there's a lot of opportunity out there for you to, to do something similar? Yeah, absolutely. The the division's shaken up between like the old vets like Jacare and and then and the new young blood. And, uh, you know, since the Contender Series, I've, I've kind of worn the nickname, one of the nicknames, uh, King of Contenders. And, and uh, I want to be that King of Contenders. And, you know, we're we're gonna sit down with my manager, and and after the fight, not looking past Gaslam, but when we get our shot to make a call out, we're gonna have a specific call out, and uh, it just it, we'll see who's available, you know, and what makes sense, and um, you know, you don't want to call someone out who's already booked, and a lot of these guys are booked up, uh, but so we'll see what makes sense for us, and the division is is full of opportunity, and I'm gonna take advantage of it this year. Absolutely, man. And uh, last question for you. When you step in that cage next Saturday, UFC 258, you, Kelvin Gaslam, what are fans going to see go down between you two? Uh, fans are going to see a high-paced, exciting fight, man. Um, I know he's he's ready to throw down. He's ready to get his hands on me. I feel the same way. Um, my my path to victory is, is, is walking forward, uh, eating shots, giving shots, and just making this an exciting fight and uh let making the fight go everywhere and just being unpredictable and um so tune in it's going to be fireworks we're going to try to steal the show uh you know with fight of the night or hopefully performance of the night for me and uh fans can definitely uh look forward to this one i'm certainly looking forward to it man and good luck in the fight really appreciate the time ian all right thank you man appreciate you guys